Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Smith from Backbench Code. So in the last part, we have completed the whole UI design of this app, and now it's time to add the functionalities. So let's start by adding the paper button. And again, I repeat, we are going to implement the checkout button because in India, we don't have the access to the PayPal donate button. Oh, by the way, guys, if you have not watched the previous parts of this project and want to continue this project from this part, in that case, you can just clone the specific branch and then follow along. I'll put a repository link in the description box. Okay, so first of all, just go to the browser and search for PayPal. Go to the browser. This is PayPal. Just go to the official site, which is paypal.com. What is the official site? Come on. This is the paypal.com. You need to create an account. I already have an account. Yeah, here it is. Just let me log out. Yeah. You just need to create an account using this sign up. Uh, make sure this is business account because you are going to receive the payments. And then this is very simple step. Let me click on the login. I guess I know my password. Yeah. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. This is 70 whatever. Click on login. Great. After the login, you just need to create a sandbox account. And PayPal gives you a default sandbox account. But if you want to create one, you can just search for this. So PayPal, this is the easiest way. PayPal dashboard. Yeah, PayPal developer dashboard, something like that. PayPal developer dashboard. Okay, just search for this. Okay, here you can just go to this application PayPal developer or directly go to this sandbox account. Just click on this sandbox account. Great, look at this. I already have my seven or eight accounts. Yeah, look at this. PayPal gives you two default sandbox accounts. But if you want to create one, you can just click on this create account. And then just select what type of account you want. The personal means the buyer account where you can only pay. And the business means the merchant account where you can also receive the payment. Okay, just select the country or region. I'll go for business. I recommend you to create two separate accounts. One is personal and one is business. And then click on create and that's it yeah and then if you want to change something just select the account click on this three dots and then select view slash edit yeah you can just change the name here email id password just click on this edit and then let's say the name is what Eden hazard so there's a match between chelsea and real madrid so let's go for Eden hazard hala madrid Eden hazard yeah mm -hmm. Click on save. Great. Successfully updated information. You can also check the API credential, which you don't need. Funding, settings, you don't need this. Okay, just close this. And now you need to create an app. So just select this My Apps and Credential from the side menu. Mm -hmm. Just click on this Create App. And name this. Let's say Save Walter YouTube. Oh, save Walter YouTube. Great. App type is merchant because I'm also going to accept the payment. And then it is already selected as sandbox account. Just leave this default. Click on this create app. And that's it. It will give you a client ID which is needed to connect your app with this PayPal account. Yeah, look at this. This is the public client ID. So just copy this and paste it somewhere i mean save this somewhere yeah comment this out okay so you got the client id and now we are going to integrate this using the paypal script which is also the simplest way so you can just go to the google and search for paypal script the search for paypal script it will give you the javascript sdk i just select the first one and by the way guys, I'll put all these links in the description box. If anything goes wrong in the process, you can just check out the description box. Yeah. Okay, so just grab this script. We need this one. Just copy this. Okay, cool. Just go to your code editor again. Just go to a donate page. And here, we just need to somehow inject this script. Now here's a gotcha. In next days, we can import head component and inject separate data for separate page. So you might think that we can just simply add the script in the head component and that will work. In fact, I also tried that but for some reason the PayPal script was not working fine. So you need to take the layman way to inject the script. And that is just create a script and append this to the body. It seems confusing, don't worry. Okay, let's do it. So inside this donate component, let's create a function which is, let's say add PayPal script. So const add 
paper script let's create an arrow function and now let's create a script so const script up is document dot create element let's create a script great just set the source is script dot source just set the source the script we have just copied just the url grab this put it here just replace the client id with your client id i got my client id here just copy this or cut it out and by the way guys this is a public client id so you don't need to put this in the you know dot env file let's add some other properties so script type is the javascript so script dot type is text plus javascript nice we want to load the script asynchronously so script dot async is true that's it now just append the script to the body so document dot body dot append child just append this script oh not child script and now we want to execute this function when the component did mount so for that we are going to use use effect pd simply react so use effect should be auto imported come on yeah auto imported i can see that cause there is no error from type script okay just pass the empty dependency array so that it only executes when the component did mount and now here i just call this add paper script great let's check this out it should work Just go to a donut screen. Make sure you go to a donut screen, okay? And then just go to console. We have some error, and that is not related to the script. Just clear this and check if the window dot paper is there. Yeah, window dot paper is not undefined. It means our script is injected. You can also double check this. Just go to elements. Just go to head. Now we have injected this in the body, right? So, mm -hmm -hmm. yeah, look at this. Script source blah 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 paper dot com slash sd slash js client id blah blah blah. So our script is successfully injected. It means now we can create the paper button. But before that, we can still optimize this. So the idea is inside this function, I'll check if the script is already injected or not, and how by using this window dot paper. So let's do that. So if window dot paper is true it means the paper script is already injected and to keep track of that i'll be creating a state variable so u state is a shortcut let's name the state variable script loaded script loaded and the setter is set script loaded up and the initial value is false if the window dot paper is there i'll set the script loaded to true and then return so that we don't need to go through the whole process again and also when the script is loaded on load so script on load so on load just trigger an arrow function and this is set script loaded true beautiful and now let's add the paper button for that there is a nice package which is called react paper button version 2 So search for React Paper Button version two. Just go to npm site. Just install this using npm i React Paper Button version two. Just go to your terminal and look at this. I've already installed that because in my machine it takes a little bit more time. So I've just installed that. So you just install that and meanwhile let's see the package. Okay, so here. This is a simple wrapper. Just look at the user's example. Look at the prerequisites. To use PayPal Smart Payment button in products, then you must have a PayPal business account, and you have a PayPal business account. Mm -hmm. You can just import the PayPal button from this React PayPal button version two. Just copy this, and then inside this PayPal button, you can just pass some properties, which is amount, and look at the amount. We already have the amount in our state variable. This is amount set amount. We did that in the last part, and then you can pass another property which is on success, and this is what you want. So inside this on success, inside this function, it will pass the details and the data, and inside these details, you have all the details about the pair and the transaction. 
and then inside this function if the payment is successful you can just save the data in your database or do whatever you want it also has a property which is on error so if anything goes wrong in the process it will execute that function okay enough talk let's execute this okay just go to the top and put it here simple paper button from react paper button version 2 nice just remove this paper button we don't need that I mean the dummy paper button we don't need that just put a curly brace and here just check if the script is already loaded or not if it is loaded it means we can safely import the paper button a lot of paper button okay great and if the script is not loaded just put a span and so loading not loading loading dot 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 great inside this paper button just pass some properties so first one is obviously the amount and this is a state variable which is amount and then the on success function i mean on success property here you can pass a function and that will get the details and the second thing is data we don't need the data we need the details so just create an arrow function and just log out the details great let's see go to donate refresh the page yeah this paypal button just select five dollar click on paypal it will launch a pop-up and here you just need to put your sandbox credential mm, for that let me just copy the sandbox credential mm, just go to account and then select an account let's say this one mm, sergio ramos copy the email id just go to a donate page click on continue just put it here and the password the password just copy this and put it here click on login so it has redirected me to the checkout button look at this the amount is five dollar this is high sergio this is ship to cause this is the checkout button just scroll down and click on pay now successful just check out the logs go to console just click on this object and look at this we got all the details we got the pair inside this pair i have the email address the name the given name the surname and here inside this purchase units look at the first element of the array you can see the amount and the value is five dollar the currency is usd the details about the pay and all this stuff okay so we just need to grab some of this stuff and then put it in our database and we are going to do that in the next part so that's it for this video i hope you have enjoyed this video so if you got any help from this video please hit the like button so that youtube algorithm does something good for me so see you in the next part till then happy debugging bye